people get into the business for different reasons. And if you're, you know, hopefully you're passionate about making movies and you actually want to make movies. Pretty much, I was about three and a half, four years old when I fell in love with Abbott and Costello movies. My father, who uh, is in the film business, film editor back in New York, I grew up in New York, um, introduced me to Abbott and Costello. So I started watching them almost religiously, you know, when growing up and uh, started writing stories. Before I could even write, I would translate stories to babysitters. I kind of wanted to be a clown comedian because I fell in love with comedy right away. High school, junior high school, I got a video camera when I was 13. I uh, started making home films and short films and realized at the age of 14 that I really wanted to be a filmmaker and a director at that point and uh, moved closer into that and started watching everything. Realized that um, horror films were at that point the way in for many filmmakers. You didn't need a huge budget, you didn't need big names, the genre sold it. Mm. So it was affordable and that's where they would let first time filmmakers try to make a movie. Yes. 87 is when I wrote a script called There's Nothing Out There. As an exercise, I just said, I wonder how long it would take to write a low-budget exploitation horror film. So I sat down over spring break and wrote this uh, script called There's Nothing Out There, mm -hmm. which took me five days. Mm -hmm. um, but as I was writing it, I couldn't quite do it seriously because I'd seen so many bad horror films that were just ripping off the good horror films that I said, you know, why hasn't anybody in a horror film ever seen a horror film? And, you know, the, the, these are teenagers that watch horror films, and these are all teenagers that are starting the movie doing all these stupid things that they would know better right. than to do. So this was in 87. Mm. I said, you know, uh, let's uh, have a character who's seen every horror film and video, like myself, and makes fun of all the cliches and the conventions mm. while you're in a horror film. That script was what wound up being my first professional film when I was 20 years old. In, in terms of there's nothing out there and Scream and... It's been interesting because over the years, it's, it's, my film has built up a kind of cult following and, mm -hmm. and became known as kind of a precursor that inspired it all. Yeah. Um, and there is a connection between the movies, too. Uh, and I never confronted Kevin Williamson, but I'd be very interested to know if he would ever admit to have seen There's Nothing Out There on cable late night. Because when he was writing the script, he said he was watching a lot of horror films late night cable at the time and came up with this idea. Some of your biggest influences? I did fall in love with Steven Spielberg. I saw E.T., Perfect Age, loved E.T., uh, The Blues Brothers, and actually Psycho 2 were, were major impacts on that, followed closely by Fright Night, After Hours, and Stepfather. So just to kind of fast forward here, yeah. you just did uh, a movie called The Black Room. The Black Room was my 23rd feature. It was great having the cast. Uh, two weeks before shooting, and we didn't have the main lead. Myself and uh, the, my producer on this film, Esther, Esther Goodstein, knew uh, Dominique Swang and worked with her before, James Duvall, mm -hmm. Tiffany Shepes, you know, but they were not big enough names for the name name. So we couldn't cast anybody until we knew who was playing what roles. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got a little under the weather and went to uh, CVS to get a prescription, and I just happened to stand on line behind Natasha Henstridge. And I recognized her, she was not made up, she was just there shopping you know, for her kids. So I texted the producer and I'm like, you know, I'm next to Natasha Henstridge online, she'd be great for the role of Jennifer, and like, talk to her, like, just talk to her, go up and talk to her. Like, so I waited till she was like leaving the store, and then I timed it out, so we'll be both in the parking lot, and I was like, uh, Natasha Henstridge? And she's like, yes, and I'm like, I'm, my name's Rolf Kineski, I'm a filmmaker, and I'm doing a film in two weeks, you know, two weeks, a horror film, are you available? Do you have any And you know, but I was, you know, and she thought I was legitimate. And I was, I was so worried, okay, here's a crazy stalker fan, you know, I'm gonna bring. Yeah, Natasha Henstridge never, I mean, if you remember from Species and stuff, she's, I'm, I'm sure she gets noticed a lot. She said, well, here's my contact to my managers and uh, send them the material. And we called four times, didn't hear back, same kind of runaround. Mm -hmm. And then five days later, but I gave her my card when mm -hmm. I was there, I get a call from her mm -hmm. directly. And she's like, I never heard anything from my managers, what happened? And I said, well, we've been trying, but they, they given us the runaround. She goes, yeah, that's what I was afraid of because hey, that happens a lot. So she said, send me the script directly. She gave me her email address. I sent it over to her and little discussions. And after like two days, she signed on board wow. and suddenly so casting in the parking lot of CVS Pharmacy, yes. Do you storyboard? What's your process? I mean, you know, everybody goes about this a little bit differently, so. I am a big believer in shot lists. Yeah. I do very detailed shot lists, like scare everybody shot lists, because I put down every single shot, mm -hmm. I go through the whole script and write down the whole thing, and usually it's about a 25, 26 page shot with like five to 600 shots, which I know we're not going to get all, but you put them all down and then you, you combine shots. Um, storyboards, I don't need as much, but I have used them, especially when we're doing 
action or effect sequences because it makes everyone at ease. Mm -hmm. So we actually have some great storyboards on the Black Room. And actually even some of the storyboards influenced the special effects and stuff because we had done it before. And when they saw some of the designs he did, he goes, oh, that's cool for the creature. So they added that. So um, they, they can be very useful. What are some of your recommendations for the next generation of filmmakers, the independent filmmakers starting now, making their first feature, let's say, or even short films? Make movies that you'll be pleased with. That, you know, because at the end of the day, you have to live with the film. It's your movie, it's, it's out there forever. And if you don't like it, you know, then you really feel like you wasted your time. Find your passion, find what you really want to do. Mm. Hopefully, you have commercial sensibility. Like I said, if you're, you know, if your influence was, I mean, there, there was in a, in a book that was actually saying, they asked, what, what is the filmmaker's favorite film? And based on that, you could kind of say, mm. if you're gonna have an easier, hard career of it. Mm. So if, you're, if the filmmaker says, my favorite film of all time is Jaws, there's a good chance you'd be successful. <laughs> if my favorite film of all time is Blue Velvet, you're gonna be up for a ride. Don't make yourself sick over this, uh, this crazy business. Because yes. there's no rhyme or reason to it. As they say, nobody knows anything. And that's the only real truth in the business.